My sweets. Who'll volunteer to guard the treasure for me? How about it, George Jelly Beam Boy? It'll be a new tour of duty for you. Aye, sir. Captain, sir. I'll guard the treasure. <laughs> uh, Petey. Show young Jellybee here how to guard the treasure. Well, my bucko, don't let no land-loving thief make off with what's mine. Er, uh, ours. Blinky, draw up the map. X marks the spot. And then, we'll read the benediction. George Jellybee stands guard over kids' treasure. Lost his head for kids' pleasure. He wore poor, but honest. Stand by for the Egyptian benediction, lads. The, the, the Egyptian benediction, Captain? But, uh, we, we've only got one guardian, sir, and... We need more than that, sir. Shut your gob and read it! <clears throat> Get on with it, you wormy chitin! By the power of the Sphinx, we hereby decree the treasure's guardian is George Jellybee. To volunteer was poor Jellybee's lot, his head. Rest here where X marks the spot. Ra Ra, Necro Decree, Ambino Fet, Xerxes, Nefertiti. <laughs> Five guardians is better than one. And gold is thicker than friendship. George's Island. How did George's Island get its name? What is this, George Waters? Well, it's a map of George's Island. Well, since there's a treasure there, a true map showing the pirates, the pirate ship, and the spot where they buried the treasure. What else can you tell us about George's Island? Well, George's Island was named after George Jellybee, a sailor that Captain Kidd killed to guard the treasure that he buried there in the pirate days. Germs away? Every day. And my grandfather says that when you're digging up a dead pirate's treasure, you can't speak one word or else the dead pirate's ghost will come back to life. 
That is a very interesting little tidbit of information. But it is completely wrong. Utterly, completely and totally wrong, wrong, wrong. Did you read the text? No, Miss Burger, but... Once again, you have picked up spurious information from an uninformed source and paid no attention to your homework. That means that you are no longer a vulture, but are now a dodo category student. Take care lest you remain a dodo category person throughout your life, George Waters. Let's try an eagle. Bonnie. Would you please tell the class how George's Island got its name? George's Island, originally known as Boskin Island, got its name from a fort on the island named Fort George after King George III, reigning monarch of England and its calling Nova Scotia at the time of the fort's construction in 1762. Hmm. Very good, Bonnie. Bonnie knows that history is the study of facts, not fairy stories. My grandfather told me that story and it's true. Don't you talk back to me, young man, especially in that tone of voice. You'll remain out of class today. God damn the unreliable little sea urchin. Tired of that woman's interfering ways. Why don't we live in a normal house, Grandpa? You trying to say you don't like it here? Mm, no. Yes, you are. If you mean something, then out with it and say what you mean. Mm, what you said about George's Island wasn't true. No, oh, I'm a lie now, am I? But Miss Birdwood, she said... Birdwood! George, first you criticize my home, and then you quote the name of Birdwood on a matter of historical fact. Maybe you're tired of sailing with me. If that's what you want, then be gone. Go live in some fancy subdivision with a pool and two pianos and a dishwasher and little rat-sized dogs. It'd make my life a whole lot easier, and that's for damn sure. The reason why my mother probably died was because you were so mean to her! Right, and God himself is punishing me for driving your mother to an early grave by sticking me with the job of nursemaid to a spoiled child. There you are. Two nice straight lines, straight now. Open straight. Why do you only have a grandfather and no parents? What do you care? Sorry, I just asked. My parents are in Italy. They're rich. My mom's an ambassador. Big deal. Quit bragging. It isn't bragging if it's the truth. 
You're just jealous because you're poor. My grandfather's been to Italy. He's been all over the world. He drinks too much and tells stories. Who says? Everybody. You're a liar in any ways. I don't care. Do so. Do not. At least I want a teacher's pet like you. Dodo. Suck up. Nerd. Albatross. I'd like to speak to you at recess, Bonnie. Yes, Miss Birdwood. You may proceed. Quickly, quietly. Not a word. You like George Waters, don't you, Bonnie? No, Miss Birdwood. Now, Bonnie, did you know that George Waters likes you? He does? Yes, yes, he does. And did you know that George might need your help? Why, Miss Birdwood? Why do you think a bright boy like George is in the Dodo group? Hmm? I don't know, Miss Birdwood. Well, there's only one reason, and that's trouble at home. Now, I'd like to help George. Wouldn't you like to help him, too? I guess so, Miss Birdwood. Of course you would, Bonnie. That's the kind of girl you are. George, our maid won't be home till later. Could I go home with you to your house? Well, why don't you go with one of the girls? They think I'm a teacher's pet, too. Can't I go with you? Well, I don't know. Please, I won't bother you. Just don't brag the whole time and walk behind me so that nobody will see you with me. Over here? Well, yeah. George, you see those hooligans out there? Who's this? She looks as if she might be one of them. They're not there. This is Bonnie. Bonnie. A bonnie lass with a bony ass, eh? <laughs> Beg your pardon? Uh, George, um, get a chocolate milk for you and the lass, eh? Um, and don't forget my grog. Now, let's see what we have here. There. Isn't that pretty? You a schoolmate of George's? I'm in his class. If that's what you mean to ask. You're also taught by that Birdwood woman. You mean Miss Cloyke Birdwood, our homeroom teacher? She had to repeat everything I say, Lars. She's got a hold of your brain, too. Thank you, now. Yeah, chocolate milk. Happy days! Want to see my secret pet? Sure. Can I have some more chocolate milk first? Okay. Get him on Halloween. And he won't even know it.
Too much noise. Somebody was making too much noise and I did not hear the pin drop. I did not hear the pin. Someone must have moved. Very good. You may proceed. <sighs> there is a stuffed dowel and a huge spider and he let us drink chocolate milk. And I think there was a shrunken head. No, 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 Bonnie. I'm not interested in things. I'm looking for... Trouble at home. And did you happen to notice whether George's grandfather was uh, drinking? Um, yes, I think so. What was he drinking? Grog. He called it Grog. Grog. G R O G. Not exactly chocolate milk. And he was shooting a cannon at some boys. My name is Birdwood, Miss Cloaca Birdwood. I'm here to see Mr. Droonfield. Do you have an appointment? No, but it's very important. One of my students has trouble at home. Trouble? That's right. Rodan approaching me. Rodan approaching me. Droonfield avoidance. Droonfield avoidance. Location of top secret turtle behind Great China Wall. F-14. Target lock on Rodan. Oh, oh, oh. Rodan approaching quickly. Turtle in distress, turtle in distress. Mr. Junefield? Yes? Um, oh, there's a, a Miss uh, Birdwood at the door to see you. Birdwood? Sh should I? Oh, um, well, give me a second to finish up and send her in. It's so nice to see you again. Pleasure's mine, Mr. Drunfield. Yes. Let's sit down. Let's sit down. Well, it must be very important. It is. It's very important. One of my students has trouble at home. Mm. Now, I know you're a very busy man, Mr. Drunfield. Yes. So, I'm volunteering to help. Oh, just the thing. Well, show me what you've got. Ooh. Mm. Well. We've got very serious trouble, Miss Birdwood. <laughs> Do 
Did I ever tell you about the time I fell off the ship in the North Sea? No, I have to do my homework. Miss Birdwood says that history and science are the study of facts. The facts, huh? Not fish stories or ghost stories. I'm too old for that. Well, there's the facts, and then there's the facts. For instance, sometimes stories I tell you might be a wee bit exaggerated, and I'm no always giving you the facts when it comes to ghosts. Because if I were to give you the real facts about ghosts, you wouldn't be able to sleep for months. There's no doubt that you're still a wee bit young for all that, you know. I don't think so. Uh -huh. How old are you? Ten. Oh, that's too young. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. Story I'm thinking of would scare the wits out of you. Scared the wits out of me and I was old in ten. Please tell me. I won't be too scared. I swear. It's a serious ghost story about serious and dangerous ghosts. Not like them that knock about the house, I tell you, to get them some sugar because they miss the taste of sweets. Or come and ask you to shut the lid in the coffin properly. No, these are murderous spirits who are hanging on to treasure and suffer no man to take it from them. They were murderers in life and they're murderers even in death. Please tell me. Please. Please. Ain't so quiet as it looks out there. Here's the bare facts. Judge for yourself what it means. I weren't much older than you when I shipped out on the Leander as a cabin boy. One of the last of the commercial schooners. We had a long voyage, and during the long voyage, with an outbreak of fever, we were quarantined right off George's Island when we finally got back to Halifax Harbor. We were right unhappy about not being allowed ashore since it happened to be Halloween and we'd miss all the parties and carry on. As the voyage lasted almost a year, we, um, we was getting anxious to see our folks, and they were getting anxious to see us. They waved to us from the dark side, and we would look through the telescope at them, you know. And finally, after all, the man who has wives and children has a look. It's my turn to take a peek. Now, I was only 14, and on the bottom rung of the totem poles, you might say. And I looked to the docks to see my mother. That's your great-grandmother. And I waves to her, and she waves back. And finally, after a lot of ways, because there's only so much waving you can do, I scan the horizon to see what things look like, and things change in some way. Now, when I trained my on George's Island, for it was uninhabited then as it is now, seen a strange sight. I handed a telescope to my mate Roddy, the cook's assistant. He was older than me, but a wee bit simple. <laughs> I'd often heard about the man in the red coat with the red fez. He was supposed to lead you to Captain Kidd's treasure. And as Roddy and I had more than a passing interest in pirate gold, Kept our secret quiet and slipped away later that night to see what we could find. I don't feel good, Archie. Let's go back. Die, die in Jesus. All's well! All's well. All's well. Where is everybody else? They volunteered to stand guard over the treasure. Good men that they were. Are. Ah. Something's foul. It's you, you scurvy piece of flotsam. Where's my brother, Petey? Petey had a little accident. He fell into a hole. But I covered him up good. You killed him? What of it? He tried to steal me gold. I lied! Where's our share? 
We fought for it and killed for it, and we're not sailing on without it. We don't sail without our share. Put <laughs> down, or I'll kill the lot of you, and then there'll be no share. Well, that's fine by me, Captain Kidd. Sail apart! They mean us. Roddy O'Brien's watery grave. Get the key. Unlock the sea chest. Right, now lift the lid. Used to be his, now it's yours. Wow! I'm gonna have the coolest Halloween costume ever. <laughs> but didn't you want to go back to George's Island and find Captain Kidd's treasure? Oh, sure, Georgie, but you, you can't get the treasure unless the man in the red suit leads you to it, and I don't recall having the pleasure, good or bad, of running into him since. Mm. Now, give me some grog, will you? I'm thirsty. I questions, questions all the time. Where they live. Oh my. And he's an invalid, confined to a wheelchair. Oh my. Birdwood? Yes, Mr. Junefield. Very community minded of you to give up your Saturday like this. Think nothing of it, Mr. Junefield. Teaching is a sacred trust. And I learned to accept that trust long ago when I first entered the profession. You may not come in. George, this is Mr. Junefield from Children's Services. And I am Cloaca Birdwood. George, the shotgun. That's an order, the shotgun. Uh, I don't think we should tarry, Miss Birdwood. That's a good idea, unless you want your fat ass fried and salted. You haven't heard the last of us. I heard enough to last me forever, you demented hen! Have you seen enough, Mr. Dronefield? More than enough, Miss Birdwood. More than enough, Miss Birdwood. No, I didn't. They're just blanks. How can I go back to school? With your head held high for once as how. Is there a legal guardian? Uh, no. No. 
there doesn't seem to be any record of the father and the mother is deceased. Um, the grandfather, Mr. Archibald Waters, uh, has been um, caring for the child for the last few years. I see that the grandfather is an invalid. Yes, yes, yes confined to a wheelchair. Yes, so with, a, with, a, with a very small pension, uh, which can hardly support uh, himself, let alone the boy. And they live in a disgusting little hovel, completely lacking in proper sanitary facilities. One that might fall into the ocean at any moment, I might add. You say he fired shots at you? Yes, yes, the man's a lunatic. That's hard to prove. We have got to do something, Your Honor. The poor boy needs a proper home. Oh, oh yes. One more thing. The man drinks. At home, that is. So do I. The pension is very small. Oh, yes. No one could live on that amount. No one. The poor boy needs a good environment. I can only imagine, Your Honor, what he has to go through every day just to do his personal business. Germs away? Every day! Miss Birdwood? Yes. Follow me. George Waters? Yes. We have a court order here. We'd like you to come along with us. When? Now. Can I fool my grandfather? I'm afraid not, son. Well, come along, George. Get your belongings. Hmm? Stop that chirping. new home, and these are your foster parents, Mr. and Mrs. Bean. Welcome to 153 Snudgrove. Come in. I, I want to go home, please. <laughs> Listen, you 
can't always get what you want when you want it. And perhaps, maybe even, you will be with your grandfather, uh, perhaps even soon. But in the meantime, while we conduct the investigation... What? While we conduct the investigation, Mr. and Mrs. Bean are being paid to look after you. What's the investigation about? What's the investigation about? Yeah. Well, you do want to be with your grandfather, don't you? Yeah. Then if that's what you want, then you be a good boy and do exactly what Mr. and Mrs. Bean tell you to do, okay? Okay. Okay. Uh, glass of wine? Oh, no. Duty calls. I must away. Goodbye, George. You're used to living in a cabin because there's not a lot of heat down here. Why is there so much grog here? Grog? Fine wine, not grog. Roger Bean makes the best wine in this province. It's got to be kept down here where it's cool. So it ages better. What's in here? What's in there is the other foster number one. No concern of yours. We use numbers down here, and then we don't have to remember the names. They come and go, you know. Plain but clean. If you get bored, you can read the Bible. If that doesn't suit you, you can clean some wine bottles. And don't mention our new security gate to Droomfield. He thinks we spend too much money on new fosters as it is. How many times have you run away? Never. That's funny. I got an eye for runners and you look like one to me. Say good night, number two. I repeat, Captain Waters, the court has ordered you not to come within one quarter mile of George. If you are caught trying to see him, you'll face the full consequences of the law. Kidnapping! That's what it is! I don't care about any court order! He's mine, and he's meant to be with me! To hell with a lot of you! He hung up on me! Well, I'm not surprised they often take it quite badly. Wherever emotions rule, You'll find trouble, Miss Birdwood. How very true, Mr. Droonfield. Oh. Allow me, Mr. Droonfield. Would you care for a seed? Oh, no. Thank you. Oh, okay. Oh. Have a seat, Mr. Droonfield. Oh, wait. That's why I came here, to be here when he called. They often call the teacher. It was very kind of you, Mr. Droonfield. 
it's nothing at all. It's just part of the job. Miss Birdwood? Yes. I have to know now. Hmm? I mean, I mean, you have to go now. I, I've got a lot of work to do. Of course, Mr. Drewfield. <laughs> Well, good night, Miss Birdwood. Good night, Mr. Drunfield. And... Yes? Thank you so much for coming over. Oh, yes. Seventeen minutes! Seventeen minutes to get washed, dressed and eat before Mr. Drunfield comes to get you off to school. What's the matter? You never had cream of wheat before? It's good for you. It's cheap, too. And if you don't like the little lumps, just put them on my plate. It's my favorite part. Where's Foster number one? <laughs> <laughs> Foster number one minds her own business, and we expect you to do the same. Too slow. Maybe you'll like it a little better tomorrow. Lunch. Well, come on, come on, Mr. Drewfield. <laughs> Mr. Drewfield doesn't have all day. Good morning, all. Good morning, Gee, it's good to see you. <laughs> I've been waiting forever for you to come. Why won't they let us see each other? Was it because you're in the war? No, Georgie, it's, it's, it's not because of the war. It's because, uh, it's because they say that boys like you needs two parents, not just one. And, and boys like you needs uh, decent clothes, and toys, and good food and plumbing. You understand, huh? But they only give me parsnips and plain yogurt and slimy stuff. C can I go home after school with you? Uh, oh, oh. There is a court order preventing you from seeing this boy. And this escapade certainly isn't going to further your case. Don't threaten me, you irritating carbuncle of a woman. Oh. Oh. Dare you call me a carbuncle? And the next time I see you around here, I'm I'm gonna call the police and have you arrested. Understand? Carbuncle! Let me go! Oh, don't you talk back to me, young man. Oh, oh, my oh, you wouldn't if you knew it was good for you, George. Let me go! Nothing but trouble, George Waters. And the only way to deal with trouble is severely.
time for school. And I see you learned to like your cream of wheat a little better this morning. Oh, they all come round eventually. You ain't no different. Where do you think you're going? You are in grade school for shut-ins, as of now. They save that for the worst troublemakers. Lunch at 12, recess at 2.30. Hello, my name is Miss Birdwood, and I ask you to join, and I ask you to join me in the exciting journey of learning. Pencils and papers ready? Good. Because we are going to begin with a test. Yes? Mr. Dreamfield? Yes. Mr. Waters has arrived. Shall I send him in? Oh, well, yes, of course, Miss Plifter. Mr. Waters, you can go in now. It's nice to see you, Mr. Waters. Mm. Grandpa! Georgie! <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. But it, it is necessary for you to be at least 1.5 meters apart at all times. I'm sorry, but that's the way it is. Good news, George. We're not going to have to send you away. Um, two days ago, uh, we were going to send you to uh, new foster parents uh, in another part of the country, but we decided not to do that uh, since your grandfather has very wisely agreed to uh, cooperate in the adoption process. Your grandfather uh, agreed that it would be better for all concerned if you were to be adopted by a proper parents and raised in a real home. That's not true, Grandpa. George, I thought it would be the best thing for you. Grandpa! I hate you! 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 Get me go! No, I won't let you go. Go! Oh, no, you're acting like a little hooligan now, and I'm going to I take go. you out of here. Because I you're not go. a... I go! Go! Here, in the room next door. I'm foster number one. They lied to you about my parents being in Italy. Just don't make a big deal about it, okay? I don't have any parents either. What about your grandfather? I hate my grandfather. I wish you were dead. You wouldn't say that if you thought it could come true. No. My grandfather's given me up for adoption. Really? Yes. And I hate the beans. Why, well, hate, hate, hate the beans. Did you put the guinea bar on my bed? I ate half of it. Looks so good. The beans are always trying to save money on food. Mm. Do you want this one? Don't you want it? No, my grandfather gave it to me. Here. Thanks. Didn't I tell you there'd be trouble? Number one, go to your room. Number two, get to bed. Mr. Bean, take away his Bible, his cleaning brushes, and his wine bottles. There'll be no breakfast tomorrow for either of you. And 
believe me, we'd cancel your Halloween privileges if it wasn't too late. Special babysitter. Come on in, Mr. Drumfield. Come on in. Yes, good evening. Welcome to 153 Snudgrove. Hey, terrific costume. Good news, George. Your grandfather has agreed to sign the adoption release papers tomorrow. It won't be much longer before you have a nice new family with good, steady parents who will love you almost as much as if you were their own. Come along, George, Bonnie. Let's be off. Bye. Good evening. Mm -hmm. Rats. They're still watching us. I know. Let's get ahead of them. taking Halloween a bit too far. Oh, yes. That person is sick. Oh, yes, I agree. What kind of name is Cloaca, anyway? Oh, it's Roman. As in Roman goddess? It's an engineering term, actually. Oh, that's interesting. Are they looking? No. Get off to. Oh, my. Oh, <laughs> 
right, leave it, leave it, leave it. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Hurry up, Mr. Drumfield! Uh-oh, uh-oh, why? Well, why, well, why, well, why, well, why? I thought you were dumping me. Dumping my own Georgie Billswater. It's true, I haven't been much of a parent. But that doesn't mean I'm going to abandon the most important person in the world to me, eh? I had to let children's services think that or they'd have uh, taken you away. Come on now. <laughs> Where are we headed? To the open sea, lass. There's an old lighthouse where we can bivouac for the night. be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. <laughs> <laughs> you, you children, we need a boat quickly. Got any money? We're taking on water. Yeah, yeah. Grab Scallion. Look lively and start fishing! Start! You know, that was my own personal money that I used to pay for the boat. And those boys didn't give me a receipt, and I'll never be reimbursed for it. Well, I was fortunate that you had the money, Mr. Greenfield. And $203 is a small price to pay to save those children from the clutches of that man. I didn't want to go to Gordon's Island tonight. Oh, I'd rather we made Sam Bro, but as things are, we'd be lucky to make George's Island. Funny man, ask, can you swim? Yeah, you can, Grandpa. I know, I know, but keep on bailing. Maybe we'll get lucky. We're never going to make it. What are we going to do? Keep on bailing. Whoa! The lake stopped. Ah, Baker! Baker! Ah. There's somebody under the boat. What is it? There's nobody there. Your eyes can play a lot of tricks on you and all hallows Eve. Oh, damnation. If you hears anything or, or sees anything, even the slightest crack or peep, come straight back. And on no account do you go out of sight of me and the fire. You hear? Of course, Grandpa. Now, careful. Have you ever seen a ghost? No. They don't exist. My grandfather's seen a ghost. Here on George Sound. Yeah, sure. He's got proof. What? The pirate hat. He got it from ghosts. Let's go back to the fire. Okay. Look! Wow! Where do you think this came from? Look! George Jellybee stands guard over kid's treasure, lost his head for kid's pleasure. He will pour the honest. W.T.J., 31st October, 1733. 1733? Weird. October 31st. Halloween. Tonight. You know that ghost my grandfather saw? Well, it was Cat and Kid. Did you hear something? No. Now 
Now, I'm sure I heard something. What happens? Don't speak one word, or else the guardian of the treasure will come back to life and chop our heads off. You know, I thought they cut down all the trees in this island when they built the first fort in 1762. Well, obviously they've missed a few. <laughs> I think that justice would be much better served if we just turned this whole matter over to the police. I say we should leave immediately, Miss Burke. In what, Mr. Droonfield? Our boat just flew away. Yes, I know. What's that noise? What noise? I can't tell. But they're near here. I just know it. Mr. Droonfield, and it always has been. Oh. Well, even so, I still didn't hear anything. Uh. Now, just a darn minute. What's that, Mr. Droonfield? Well, someone has been digging here. 
What in the world is going on? They're talking. I wonder whose skull that is. Now, I know the history of George's Island, Mr. Droonfield, and it was never inhabited. Oh. It wonders who I am, does it? I see George Jellyby by me. I guards the treasure. You just woke me up to kill you. <laughs> Centuries. Oh. And this one's my Purdy, ain't she? <laughs> She's beautiful. <laughs> For God's sakes, let her alone! Take me instead! Mr. Drumfield. Uh, I'm sorry, Miss Birdwood, but I love you. <gasps> And I don't care who knows it. Mr. Turnfield, I... Yes? I only reported the boy as an excuse to be near you. You mean... Yes. And I only went along with the plan to be near you. Oh, Maynard. No, Aka. Aka? Aka. Oh, Romeo. Oh, Juliet. Oh, sure. Big bullies. Scaring innocent people. But what is it that you want? Yes. What we want? We want, uh... Oh, <laughs> 
Stress. Give her a real one, Jenny. Oh, oh no, one's enough. Oh. Oh. Uh oh. My turn. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Be strong, Cloaca. <laughs> Come, kid. Release them. Kid, sir, we were just having a bit of fun. We never laid a finger on the treasure. We, we made sure of that. Let them go, you hen hearted numbskulls! Let them go. You heard me! Let them go. Let them go. And where are the two children? The two children? Here! Obliged to you for looking after me, Hatch. Now, kill me. Oh, now that seems a bit hasty. We haven't even been introduced. My name is Miss Cloaca Birdwood, and this is Mr. Droonfield. Pleased to make your acquaintance, Chip. Kill them. Kill them? Uh, how? Use your swords, lop their ugly heads off. Oh. No! Oh, goodness. Some grog? Grog. Grog. Good idea, George. Well done. I got the grog. I got the grog. I got the grog. Stop! Plaguey rats. Captain's first. Kid is horn swoggled all of you. Doesn't the pirate's code ensure that every man receives a fair share and that includes grog? But Captain Kid doesn't follow the pirate's code. And he hasn't given you a drop of grog at all, has he? Oh, I never wanted to go the treasure just to see the world. Why should we kill them just because Kid tells us to? You ain't jelly bean. Hey, uh, why not uh, let Captain Kid guard it? You shut up, you troublesome sea lawyer. Shut up yourself, you overdressed hog. No, we can't do that because, because we said the Egyptian benediction over the grave. Yeah, Egyptian benediction. Yes, we're duty bound by the pirate's code of ethics. Besides, kid would kill us if we don't do what he says. Aren't you guys already dead? I don't 
want to guard the treasure. Me neither. Me neither. Me neither. Well, why should we? Yes, you we got, got it. You <laughs> take the treasure. <laughs> you <laughs> got it. You go. But we are without a treasure. We have no place to haunt and nothing to guard. Well, I I'm sure there's some lovely lady ghosts out there just dying to meet some wonderful dancers like you. <laughs> I know the perfect place. A beautiful princess lives there. Cellar is full to the rafters with grog. Listen, I have a, a map of the area. Maybe you could uh, point this place out to me on it. A quill, a quill. Well, the next best thing. Now, where will that be? Right there. I see it. What would you call it? One, five, three, snug girl. One, five, three, Snugrove. All right, lads, off we go. Off to the land of Snugrove! Snugrove! <laughs> Have you uh, completed your investigation, Mr. Dreamfield? Yes, we have, Your Honor. And? And we find that Captain Waters is a gentleman and a scholar of nautical history and a fine parent to young George. We have also found that uh, Roger and Beulah Bean are not suitable foster parents by any stretch of the imagination, <laughs> the two of them having character flaws too numerous to mention. And finally, Your Honor, we have found that we have been fools and have wasted the court's time with, with, uh... With all of our personal affairs, which we have finally sorted out. Hmm? Maynard. <laughs> In short, we would like to apologize humbly to everyone and hope that you will all give us another chance. Hmm? Bonnie Ainsley, Mr. and Mrs. Dreamfield mm -hmm. petitioned this court for your adoption. Now you are free to decide whether to accept their proposal or to reject it. I accept. Oh. Oh. George Waters, your grandfather has petitioned this court for your adoption. Do you accept or reject his proposal? Well... Sure. <laughs> George, you Not a bad bouquet for an onion wine. Give me my princess! <laughs> Boom, 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 boom,